One, two, three. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Oh, Lord, we magnify your name, Prince of Peace, mighty God. everyone you may be seated well yesterday we had a great day for a wedding out at the gazebo uh, the men had done a great work of putting a new concrete floor in the gazebo out there and uh, Jerry and uh, Paula uh, Casterline now uh, had, and it was just great nice family wedding and then the fellowship hall was filled uh, with folks uh, celebrating with them I noticed particularly that all of you are looking really good today. Thank you. And, and because of the wedding was in the fellowship hall, there's a nice uh, balloon background there. And so after the service today, because you're looking exceptionally good today, we'd like to you, instead of going out the exit door, go back to the fellowship hall, get your picture taken, and, uh, and then you can leave. Of course, we're not going to force you, but um, just saying, okay? Uh, a big thank you to uh, those who have worked so hard on the church landscaping for weeks. Have you noticed? I hope you have. Everything from pulling weeds to planting flowers, trimming hedges, putting in new bolts, pulling more weeds, mowing, cutting down and removing damaged trees, and more. A special thank you to Benji and Lynn Benjamin, Linda Camerson, Robin Flips, Phil Harry, David Lowe, and the rest of our regular mowers, Larry Edgington, Theo Smoke, Bobby and Diane Anthony. God bless you all and to anyone who we may have overlooked. Let's give all of our outdoor folks a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a week from Tuesday is our day to pray for Branch County. And so make sure that's on your calendars. And uh, then a big thing coming up uh, is uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, August 11 through 13, we're, gonna, we're putting together a vacation Bible school for our kids. So uh, for preschoolers and grade schoolers. And uh, so we've got, I, most of you probably got a text several weeks ago about working for VBS. Uh, we've got, right now, we've got about 12 workers who, who said they are going to. If, if you'd like to be included on that list, we're going to be starting plugging people into what we're going to be doing. We're calling it Jesus Camp. It's going to be a great theme. Uh, first night will be on the cross hill. The second night will be uh, around the bridge. And the third night will be at the tomb. We're going to utilize our outdoor um, object lessons there for uh, our VBS this year. And uh, so that's going to be great. Any other announcements this morning? All right, let's stand and read our scripture for the day. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. 
Lord, we pray for one another today as we worship, as we lift up our voices in praise, in worship, in adoration. Lord, that uh, of all the things that are going on in our lives, we will center our thoughts on you for these next few moments because, Lord, you are good and you are great and you are with us and you are for us. Thank you, Lord. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Remain standing. This is one of those joyful songs. He keeps me singing. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. I said, let go. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Used by every morning, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife. This would fill my heart with pain. Jesus wept across the broken string. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go, feasting on the riches of His grace, resting in the sheltering wing, always looking on His smiling face. across the way Though sometimes the past seems rough and sweet See this footprint all the way Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go To me coming back to welcome Beyond the starry sky, I shall bring my flight to words unknown. I shall bring with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. you to uh, think here of three things you are really thankful for right now in your life. Three things that you're really thankful for. Just take a moment to do that. Just think about it. Think about it. Three things you're really thankful for. All right, let's sing. Give thanks. Give thanks to the Lord for those things.
because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to do something that could be potentially really hard. I want you to think of three things that you're not thankful for. Think Truly, think of three things that you are not thankful for. And then we're going to remember what Paul told the church at Thessalonica. In everything, give thanks. So, kind of, kind of center in on that this morning. Something... You're not thankful because God is just in the mid, as much in the center of the things that we're not thankful for as he is in the things that we are thankful for. Amen. He's with us. So thinking of those things, let's sing the song again. <clears throat> Again, yes. <laughs> Curveball. <laughs> yeah. thanks for you, to you, because we know that you are using it to refine us, to deepen our faith, to strengthen us. Lord, we thank you this morning. In Jesus' name, we all say and pray. Amen. Amen. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Up our hands for the 
be visiting with us today please know that all Christians are welcome to take communion with us and if you do not have your communion cups yet they're located at the entrance to the sanctuary on the table right beside the audio visual video technology booth just behind the last row of the pews you know communion means sharing and at communion at a communion service Christians share together to remember Christ's suffering and death. Christians are encouraged to remember the pain that Jesus endured and the ultimate price he paid for the salvation of all of us through the symbolic consumption of the bread and wine. When we take communion, we are remembering that Jesus died for me personally but we are also recognizing our unity together as God's people in Christ. Communion is not principally about our standing with the Lord, but we are also recognizing our unity together as God's people in Christ. Communion is not principally, uh, when we take communion to church, we're not just saying, I am in right standing with Christ, but about our standing with the Lord's people, all of us together, that centers on our relationship with Christ. <coughs> when we take communion, again, uh, we're not just saying I am standing, I am in right standing with Christ, but we all are standing together. And in the New Testament, these two things are not mutually ex exclusive. One necessitates the other. And Paul even con uh, said to the Corinthians that they're not to wait 
they are, excuse me, to wait for one another before they eat and drink. That's why taking communion together is so important. And communion points forward to the future when Christ will return. Communion is a hopeful reminder of the ultimate fulfillment of God's plan. Please join me in prayer this morning. We believe and we confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners like us. We also believe that the bread and wine is truly your body and precious blood given for us. We are reminded of the pain, Lord, that you endured and the ultimate price that you paid for the salvation of humanity through the consumption of the symbolic bread and wine. Amen. And remember that Jesus spoke these words at the Last Supper. Take, eat this bread. This bread is my body, which is given for you, and do this in remembrance of me. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. May we pray once again, Lord, may we, may we never forget the price you paid for us. As we go about our week, may this moment stay in our minds, and may your heavenly presence be close to us. May we live daily in remembrance of how your body was broken and how your blood was spilled for all of us. Thank you for taking our place. Thank you, Lord, for covering us with your love, grace, and taking away our sins. Amen. I'll go first. <laughs> Maybe I jumped the gun, I don't know, but we'll go ahead and do prayer time first. <clears throat> A lot of times I, ha I like to have prayer time connected with communion because with communion... We uh, think about the Lord, and as Bob so rightly pointed out today, it's a communion with one another, and so we pray for one another as well. Didn't do this earlier in the service, but take a moment, find out your neighbor's name so you can pray for your neighbor by name. So go ahead and take that moment right now, find out your neighbor's name. All right, very good. We don't like for people, anyone, to leave a worship service and, and not know that you have been lifted up before the throne of God by name, not just generally. So it's so important for each one of us to pray for our neighbors. And then the scripture that we read uh, at, to, at the beginning of our service talked about praying for the peace of Jerusalem. And I thought that was so appropriate because of uh, the great speech that uh, Netanyahu gave uh, earlier this week. And, uh, and then there was uh, more bombings, um, another bombing uh, this week. And uh, we just pray that uh, by God's mighty hand uh, that God's will be done, his purposes will be achieved, and that us human beings will line up with that. And, and that's what we need. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Pray for your neighbor by name right now. Lord, we do ask your blessing upon our neighbors. Blessing of strength, spiritual strength, healing, spiritual healing, physical healing, financial healing, emotional healing. Lord, by your mighty hand that we would fix our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. 
Thank you, Lord, for coming and paying the price for us. We do pray, Lord, for the peace of Jerusalem, as your scripture instructs. And Lord, we pray for our nation, especially with all the conflict and the hatred and the division. We know, Lord, that there's only one answer. You are the answer, Lord. You're the answer for the world today. And Lord, you've lined out for us biblical principles for governing. And we pray, Lord, that we will pay attention to those. We pray for our officials in high places, that you'll give them wisdom, your wisdom. And we pray, Lord, that you would grant especially, Lord, your favor to those who who are seeking to follow you and do your will and, and to do what's right for the people. Lord, we know this is a volatile season. But we pray for the church, Lord. We pray that the church will grow more and more in the love of Jesus Christ, no matter what. For God so loved the world, this rotten, stinking world, Lord, that you gave your only begotten Son. That if we would believe in him, we would not perish but have everlasting life. So, Lord, we thank you that you give us the answers for our world. We pray for our co-workers in Christ around the world, seeking to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, that you would provide the resources they need, that you would provide the, the uh, emotional uh, support that they need as well. And Lord, grant them success in your eyes. We pray for a hedge of protection around each one, keeping them, Lord, from the, from the wiles of the evil one and his forces. So we thank you, Lord, that we can gather here to get today so freely. Worship you with all of our hearts because you so deserve it. So we thank you, Lord, for your mercy and loving kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. You're right, Jeff. I jumped the gun. Our mission moment today is CIY. Everybody hear me? And that's an acronym for Christ in Youth. Most of the events for this year are nearly over, but they're kicking off next year uh, a group called Engage, and uh, they're going to be in Ireland, which I find quite interesting. And it's with a partnering with a group called Riot. Now, it's also an acronym. It's not a riot. It's Revival in Our Town. And so we'll be praying that they will have an impact on the young people there. Uh, this is a, a great ministry, and I have grandkids that have gone to CIY. And if you have grandkids, nephews, nieces, kids, neighbor kids that get excited about Christ, check out CIY. So let's pray for them this morning, and, uh, and may thousands of kids will be introduced to Christ. Our kind and heavenly Father, we just thank you uh, for this uh, group that is spreading the message and the gospel of Jesus Christ to our young people. And Lord, we just pray that uh, this mission will flourish and it'll grow uh, in Ireland and the funds that we give to our missions. Lord, we just pray that you bless our offerings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As I run into people and uh, talk about the church here and tell them about uh, our empty tomb, I want to tell you that people are just noticing the empty tomb and and the impact that it's having. uh, And... uh, I wasn't aware of this 
I think it was Dave who told me. Two weeks ago, we had some folks uh, up from quite a far distance come up from Indiana. There's a family that was here, and uh, I thought they were just visiting cold water like people do for the weekend. But come to find out the reason they came, because they wanted to see the tomb and uh, uh, to experience worship with us as well. So uh, we just continue to pray for the gospel impact of our visual illustration now as we continue uh, to develop that. <clears throat> Last week we began a two-part a sermon on 10 reasons heaven is going to be a blast. And uh, I'm indebted to Steve Malone's message by the same title. Uh, Steve serves at the, at the Maple Grove Christian Church in Charlottesville, uh, Virginia. And uh, the five things that we covered last week were, uh, we get a new body, that's good. Uh, we'll get to live in a custom-built house, oh, that's great. Uh, we'll get to eat great food, for sure. Uh, we're going to get to talk with the Bible characters that we adore, and we're going to get to see and speak uh, with our loved ones. So that's what we covered last week, and uh, uh, I can't wait um, to, to cover what we're going to cover today. But before we get there, I want Linda to come up and give a testimony, because she has a testimony of something that happened this week. So you're going to have to just anticipate and wait here as we're going to, as we're going to launch into these things. So Linda, if you would come up. I thank the Lord for what he does in our lives every day. And I know that when we honor him, he honors us. Two weeks ago, my septic system went out. So I called, they pulled, cleaned it out. Then a week later, my septic was full again, full of water. So I called him back and he said, well, I caught, it happened on Saturday night, and I said, I'm not going to call because I don't want him to come on the weekend. So Sunday after church, I called him, and I said, you need to come pump my thing out again. It's clear full. And he said, I'll be right there. And I said, no, you won't. I said, I won't have you coming on Sunday. You need to stay home and stay with your family and worship the Lord. And he said, okay. He said, but I can't come until 6 tomorrow night. I said, I can deal with it. So he came the next night at about 5.30. Well, I'd gone to town and come right back and passed him on the way. He was stopped talking to someone, and I said, thank you, Lord, for distracting him till I got home. And... Uh, got home, he came, checked it all out, and he put it all, well, come in, and he said, well, there's a problem, the pump's gone, and I have to replace the pump. Now, realize this man comes from Union City over here to pick, do that. So he went and got the pump, put it back in, and when he got done, he came to the house, and he said, or I said, what do I owe you? And he said, you don't owe me a cent. I said, but you can't do that. I owe you money for your work, your labor, and the part. And he said, you don't owe me anything. Is it worth it to honor the Lord on Sunday and put him first? I believe that's the most important thing you'll ever do. Stand your ground, people. We have a hard road ahead, but God is more stronger than anything you've got to deal with. Trust him. Thank you, Linda, for that testimony. <clears throat> Let your light shine before Christ so that they may see your good works and glorify 
your Father in heaven. So, amen. Thank you. Well, anticipation, what is it? It's a great feeling of excitement about something that's going to happen in the near future. How many of you are anticipating heaven? All right. Yes, we are. This is what the Good News Translation says, how it says Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. To have faith is to be sure of the things that we hope for and to be certain of the things we cannot see. It was by faith that people of ancient times won God's approval. Now, if you know verse 6, you know the answer to this. You may know the answer to it anyway, but how do we gain God's approval today? Through faith. That's right. Well, we know because of our faith in God's promises that heaven is as sure, is as real as the nose on your face. And I see noses on everybody's faces here this morning. God has promised it. And last week we covered five of those promises. We're going to cover five more of them today. And folks, this is not a hope that goes like this. I sure hope I win the lottery this week. I'll be rich. Well, first, you already know you probably won't win the lottery this week. And secondly, if you did, you wouldn't be rich. You'd just have a lot of money. You, can't, you can be rich without much money at all. And just having lots of money, for those who have lots of money will tell you this, it creates a lot more problems than it solves. All you got to do is ask any lottery winner that has lost it all after several months or several years. Boy, the people just line up at the door for how that much they want the money that you won, right? But being rich in Christ and in God's promises, that brings a wealth and a security that money never can or ever will bring. So, here we go. We're going to dive into these last five reasons. Reason number six. Reason heaven's going to be a blast is because we're going to live in a perfect world. Does this world ever get you down? Yeah, I know it does. Things go wrong all the time. Uh, since sin in the Garden of Eden, we have lived in an imperfect world. We can, we can only dream of what a perfect world is like. And, and here's some words that human beings have come up with over the years and concepts. Shangri-La, Nirvana, Utopia, Paradise, Wonderland, the Promised Land. These are all places where, where there's a concept of what that wonderful other world is going uh, to be like. But folks, we have a description right here in God's Word. Revelation chapter 21, God gives John a vision of heaven, the new Jerusalem coming down from the sky. And, and John can only use mere words, mere words to describe the awesome and amazing and astounding sights that God is showing him. Can you imagine looking at these words and then try to see what's John really trying to describe here? The beauty of it. The heavenly city is 1,500 miles cubed, as high, as wide, and as long. 1,500 miles. It has high protective walls, 216 feet. And the foundation stones are adorned with precious stones, like, I'm not going to name them all, but like jasper, sapphire, emerald, topaz, and so forth. The city itself glimmers, shines like crystal, and it says it's shining like the glory of God, and it's made of gold and jasper, and the streets, not asphalt, folks, uh-uh, pure gold, pure gold, and the 12 gates, three on each side of, this, of, of the walls, the four walls, 12 gates, huge gates made out of pearls. It doesn't say anything about the oysters that they came from. <laughs> I guess I'll just have to use our, my imagination on that. There's no need of a temple there because God and his son are there. There's no need for the son because God and Jesus will provide all the 
illumination that's needed. Remember the Mount Trans- Transfiguration, where Peter, James, and John went up on the mount with Jesus. He was transfigured before their very eyes. You going to come join me? Oh, he wants to play the drums, Clay. Yeah. Maybe after church. After church, buddy, okay? Clay will show you. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a hand. Now, that's anticipation, folks. That's anticipation. Cannot wait. All right. The Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus shone before their eyes just like the sun, bright, amazing. Well, in, in, in heaven, there's no night. There's no darkness. The river of life flows, flows right through the city. Um, it's clear as crystal. And the source of the river is the throne of God. There are trees that line the banks, and those trees are the tree of life that grow 12 kinds of different fruits. I will point out there are no vegetables mentioned. (laughs) Just saying. The place is perfect. And while God has given us a beautiful place to live here on earth, and I've seen many of them, uh, with, with, the, with the touch of the miraculous hand of God, he made this creation. But what we have now doesn't come close at all to that beautiful, perfect city. All that we lost, mankind, when Adam and Eve sinned, in our first home, all that we lost, it's going to be returned to us a hundred times a hundredfold and, and maybe more. The beautiful, beautiful home that the Lord is preparing for us. I just John 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if, if it were not so, I would have told you, for I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. What a beautiful scripture. So heaven is going to be a blast Because it is an incredible, perfect world that dreams are made of and more. Reason number seven. Heaven is going to be a blast because of the no mores. The no mores. We all have our list of no mores. A couple of questions here. What have been and continue to be your biggest disappointments in life? Think about that for a moment. What are some of the biggest disappointments in life? What do you not have now that you wish with all of your heart that you did have? I know some of us have some of those. Some of you, I know, have experienced the deepest pain and the cruel injustices of this world. What is it that makes you angry? Hungry and thirsty. What sorrows have you experienced that have made you give up for a while, perhaps, and maybe never really fully recovered from? That's the impact of sin in this world. But God has promised, folks, no more hunger, thirst, Scorching heat, tears, death, crying, pain, bad guys, injustice, impure things, treacherous traitors, or the thousand other things that could cause sorrow. And when you and I get to heaven, there's going to be some awesome no mores. And these no mores should really inspire us. They should rally us and keep us going in this life because we have a living hope. Revelation chapter 7, verse 16. Never again will they hunger or thirst. Neither sun nor any scorching heat will burn them. Because the Lamb is at the center of the throne, will be their shepherd. And he will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tears from their eyes. What do God's people say? 
Oh, and I've got more for you. Revelation 21, 4. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And then in uh, verse 8 of chapter 21. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. They're not going to be there, folks. And then we get down to verse 27. Nothing impure will ever enter it, heaven nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Is your name in the Lamb's book this morning? Oh, you got to know, folks. You got to know that your name is there. Because if you know your name is there, you don't have to worry. Am I going to make it? Am I not going to make it? Like so many of the religions of the world, if I'm 51% good, and 49% bad, then I'll squeak in by the skin of my chinny, chin, chin. But that's not the way it works with Jesus. It's not the way it works with him. And we'll cover that in a few minutes. The beautiful thing is this. In heaven, it's going to be a blast because of all the no mores. Isn't that great? Here's reason number eight. It's going to be a blast because it will be the last time we fall. I'm going to read several scriptures here. Romans chapter uh, 7. Paul is writing these things. We'll see ourselves in this scripture. I don't really understand myself. For what I want to do, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. 16. But if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. Verse 18. And I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. The flesh is what some versions say, a more accurate translation. My flesh. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Next verse. 21. I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. What a miserable person I am. Uh, some versions say, what a, what a wretched person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? And I will just include mistakes and failures and fallings. How am I going to be delivered? Oh, verse 25. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law, but because of my sinful nature, if we can go back just a second. I, I lost that last part. I can't. There we are. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. Well, Paul describes the human condition, doesn't he? Yeah. Mm. Doing what we don't want to do. Disappointing God. Disappointing ourselves. Not doing what we want to do. DC Talk had a song came out several, many years ago uh, called In the Light. And just the first part of it, what a great song. It says... I keep trying to find a life on my own, apart from you. I am the king of excuses. I've got one for every selfish thing I do. What's going on inside of me? I despise my own behavior. This only serves to confirm my suspensions, suspicions that I'm still a man in need of a Savior. Amen? I need the Lord. I need Him. We are declared perfect in Christ. And we are certainly saved by grace. 
And we know that his blood washes away our, all our sin and all our stains. But we sure get tired of falling, don't we? Mm. We get up. We keep trying. But boy, oh boy, do we sure look forward to the day when we will never again fall and disappoint the Lord. Well, we will fall one more time. We'll fall to our knees in worship of Jesus Christ. And the old order of things will have passed away. And these corruptible bodies will have put on the incorruption. Glory to God in the highest. Give the Lord some praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Heaven's going to be a blast. We've covered eight reasons. We've got two more to go. Are, you want me to finish? Are we done? You want me to stop? No. Okay, here we go. In heaven, we're going to take part of an awesome Worship experience. I'm going to read from Revelation 5 and Revelation 7 and Revelation 19. It'll be on the screen. Just absorb and view this, get, get this picture in your mind. John says, I looked again and I heard the voices of thousands and millions of angels around the throne and of the living beings and the elders, and they sang in a mighty chorus, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain or who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea. And they sang, blessing and honor and glory and power belongs to the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Did you get a sense that heaven's going to be loud? Really loud. And the four living beings said, Amen. And the 24 elders sat down and worshipped the Lamb. That's one description. Here's another description. Chapter 7. After this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count. I love this. From every nation and tribe and people and language standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and they held palm branches in their hands and they were shouting with a great roar, salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living beings and they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and they worshiped God and they sang, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength belong to our God forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. You're not loud enough. And all God's people said, Amen. We're getting close, for it, folks. We're, we're joining them this morning. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 19. And after this, I heard what sounded like a vast crowd in heaven shouting, Praise the Lord! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. His judgments are true and just. He has punished the great prostitute who corrupted the earth with her immorality. He has avenged the murder of his servants. And again, their voices rang out, praise the Lord. Let me hear you say it. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I've got a drink of water. <laughs> then smoke from that city ascends forever and ever. And then the 24 elders... And the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was sitting on the throne. And they cried out, Amen, praise the Lord. And from the throne came a voice that said, Praise our God, all his servants, all who fear him, from the least to the greatest. And then again I heard what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd or the roar of a mighty ocean waves or the crash of loud thunder. 
Praise the Lord, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice. Let us give honor to him, for the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb. There's going to be lots of good food there, folks. Yes, there is. And his bride has prepared herself, and she has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear For the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. Keep it up, folks. More and more good deeds. Your clothes are going to be looking mighty fine in heaven. I love great worship. How about you? I love enthusiastic worship. I love worship full of energy and excitement and smiling faces and lifted hands and lifted hearts to the Lord because He is good and He deserves our highest praise. He deserves our best praise. He should never get halfway worship from us. Never. So I look forward, folks. I anticipate worshiping in heaven because it's going to be out of this world, you think? What a day of rejoicing that will be. I feel like singing right now, but I'm not going to. (laughs) Reason number 10, heaven is going to be a blast. We will get to see God. No one has ever seen his face. We will get to see God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. The Apostle John said, Dear friends, we are God's children. But he has not yet shown us what we will be like when Christ appears. But this we know. We know that we will be like him. For we will see him As he really is. Just taking five minutes to meditate on that verse is is glorious. Where the Lord allows our mind to go as to what it will be like to be in his presence. And to know, and I don't know that this is going to happen, but perhaps we'll look back on our life on earth And we'll say, why did I have so many doubts? Why did I not trust more? You know, that's the frailty of this human condition. I don't do what I want to do. I ended up doing things I don't want to do, or I don't do what I should do. That's the human sinful flesh. So how do I make sure that I can get there, that my name is in the Lamb's book of life. Well, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So, Jesus, what did you say? What did you say? Oh, yes, we're to believe in your name. You want us to confess your name. Yes, you are King, you are Lord, Jesus. You want us to be baptized into your name. Yes. And you want us to live for your name. Ah, that's how it is, folks. I don't know if you heard that conversation there. We're to believe in his name. We're to confess his name. We're to be baptized into his name. We're to live with his name gladly as we we walk this walk on, on this earth below. And the Lord writes our name in the Lamb's book of life because of our relationship with Jesus, not because we're good people, right? It's the Lord who forgives us our sins. So one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And folks, it's best to do it right now, not wait till later. Don't wait till later. Do it today. Don't wait. Don't put it off. If you're watching online, if you're, if you're seeing this, don't wait. Call out to the Lord. Humble yourself before Him. Don't put heaven at risk. Do you know people who are putting heaven at risk? Oh, I'll get to that later. When I get older. You know what I found out most of the time? 
when people that get older and they've shunned the Lord all the days of their life because they wanted to live life their ways, they're not interested in the Lord anymore. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to have anything to do with that anymore. And it's a shame. It's a sorrow because earlier in life, they said, well, I was interested in that one time. Or, yeah, as a kid, I went to Sunday school. My kids, you know, drugged me to church, and I did all that. But I, I had no interest in that. Don't put heaven at risk. It's not worth it. And it's all about your relationship with Jesus. So I, I want you, but more importantly, the Lord wants you to be confident that you will end up in heaven. I've just got to read uh, 1 John 5.13. Not in my notes, not on the screen, but I want to read it for you. Directly out of the Word. 1 John 5.13. I write these things to you who believe in the name, there we are, who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The Lord does not want you to walk out of this place with doubts in your mind, am I going to go to heaven or not? Folks, it's going to be a blast. And I've given you ten reasons why it's going to be a blast. But it all has to do with you and Jesus. Not who's sitting next to you and Jesus. Not your parents or grandparents and Jesus. It's you and Jesus. You and Jesus. So, give your heart to him today. Give your life to him today. If the worship team would come on up, we're going to, we're going to sing this song and we're going to thank the Lord for what he's done uh, for us today. Let's, let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, we, we open up ourselves to you today and to your word and we thank you for the descriptions that you have given to us about heaven. And we know they're just human words and they don't describe fully what it is we're going to experience. But it sure gives us a great beginning as to what it's going to be like. And so, Lord, thank you for coming down and paying the price so that we could have that confident hope of eternal life with you forever and ever. I pray for every person who hears this, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they will give their hearts to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing. I forgive them because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You work down. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's with my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be? Is my king would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It is my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. I'm my king.
things uh, for our final word. Uh, don't forget about how good you're looking today so you can go back and get your picture taken back in the fellowship hall. And uh, we have several guests here today. So glad that you came today. I want to mention one because uh, you might want to talk to him. Uh, Adam Stockford is here today. That is you, right? Okay. And uh, he's running for state, rep state representative uh, and uh, the, uh, everybody voting is what day? Thank you. August 6th, that's voting day. So if you would like to talk with Adam, uh, he's here uh, and would uh, like to talk with you too. Um, from Romans, chapter 11. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay them? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. And God's people said, Amen. 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 My life is in you, Lord. Is in you, Lord, my hope is in you. 